It's the Friday flip up. Here's what happened this week in the world of VR. Thanks to an oopsie by VR developer BitPlanet, the makers of the Ultra Wings games posted what looks to be a PSVR 2 in the wild in someone's spine indented leather office chair. It's fair to assume this is more than likely a dev kit, but it does look very much like the production design we have seen from Sony. It even seemed to have two cables still in the plastic packaging, so internet sleuthers, you tell me, is this a dev kit or what we will see in our living rooms, next to our gigantic Wi-Fi looking PS5? BitPlanet gave the tweet a few hours and then removed it after garnering a few hundred retweets in a lengthy thread. In the thread below their redo tweet with a stock PSVR2 image, BitPlanet claims it was fake news, but great Photoshop. Fake or not, this was some good publicity for the VR devs, I just hope they didn't break any NDAs that they had with Sony. Speaking of developers, the company with all the VR headsets, Meta, found itself in the hot seat this week with developers as a story came out that some devs are not happy with Meta's 30% cut in their app store. Especially after Zuckerberg has openly criticized app stores on Android and Apple being quote, unique stranglehold as a gatekeeper of what gets on phones. The 30% to the app store cut is standard across Steam, Google Play, and the Apple App Store. Meta defends its share by saying unlike Apple and Android, it's easy to download apps through third party stores, giving SideQuest as an example. Obviously the baked in Meta App Store that comes with the headset is going to get the bulk of the player's eyes, so I'm not sure that that's exactly a fair point. SideQuest is a great third party store and even with its newly released easy install setup, you still need to know how to enable dev mode on your headset to access it, which I'm not sure everyone would want to do. I guess on the bright side of things, 30% is better than the 50% meta is taking from Horizon Worlds creators. That sucks. But if you do want to learn how to enable dev mode on your headset and download the new easy install version of SideQuest to access their app store in your headset, I made a tutorial video this week, expand the description below and you'll find the link. Now onto the other side of the coin, Meta did finally release video recording settings for the Quest this week. Well, for developers for now at least. If you have made a developer account for your Quest to use SideQuest and such things, you can download the Oculus Developer Hub and sign in. Once your headset is connected, you can check out the video settings they made available in the Dev Hub 2.6 update, including 4K, 1440, and 1080p, 60fps widescreen options. And the real winner in my eyes is the bitrate options for higher quality captures and less noise and artifacting. And a helpful touch when you choose a widescreen mode and single eye view for recording, inside the headset you're given black bars on the top and bottom to let you know what is and isn't being captured. Hopefully this will become a feature for all to access in upcoming Quest firmware updates, but the caveat here is that when you record with those high settings, it does affect gameplay performance and I've seen some frame drops. But hey, I'm just glad it's an option now. In VR game news, just a quick reminder for the PC VR gang out there, the Steam Summer Sale is blazing hot right now and running until July 7th. So the obligatory, if you haven't yet, go grab Half-Life Alex now for half off and a ton of other great games with big discounts. Personally, I picked up the survival game The Forest for five bucks and I mean payday with its VR mode is 99 cents, so yeah. I went ahead and linked the VR store sale in the description below for easy access, but also could someone let me know if Rick and Morty's virtual Rickality is any good? I mean, at five dollars I know I should just do it, but hey, I figured why not ask? For those of you like me looking forward to the new Among Us VR adaption from Shell Games, we got a little update from the game's project director, Mike Traficante, in an interview with VR Scout. When asked about the team's plans for future updates, he stated, right now, it's all about getting the game out, but I mean, we're close, and we already know that we're going to continue to add stuff to it. I think most of our questions about what we do next, whether it's a new map, or whether it's more hats, or whether it's, I don't know, wristwatches or something weird, it's all going to depend on what we see players doing and asking for, and where the community has excitement. I know this is a little update, but I guess the good news here is that they're close to finishing up, and hopefully we'll get a solid release date soon. Mike also revealed a new Among Us task built specifically for VR in the game where you have to lean over in real life long enough to have your character's face scanned without looking away. Hopefully you won't get chopped in half while uploading your yellow mug to the spaceship database. In some fun news, VR dev and YouTuber Valum challenged himself to create a VR game fully inside his Quest 2 headset in 24 hours. Using Horizon Workrooms, he prepped his idea from scratch and then accessed his computer virtually for coding. He then used Shapes XR to design the game world and Virtuoso for the soundtrack. The journey is a wild one culminating in a hang gliding experience you can play for yourself. Check out his channel in the description below and make sure to check out his other video where he created the largest VR game using an outdoor athletic track passed through on the quest and a bicycle. Sadly, this week's VR news has come to an end, but just like that weird guy on the bus, I'll see you next week. Bye.